Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken. We're back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. Today, we have Ricardo Sals Gulco, who is a global strategist who works with both B2B and B2C companies, uh, helping them create a simple design. And we're going to be talking a lot about simplification and convenience and more in just a moment. First, a couple of quick announcements. I want to share with you our sponsor, Text Expander, is just a wonderful tool that eliminates repetitive typing with just a few keystrokes. It's an amazing productivity tool that saves the people in our office hours and hours of work. Uh, more about that at the break. If you've listened to this show, you know what's about to come. A couple of quick announcements. If you've got a story you want to share or a question you want to ask, be sure to reach out to me on any of the social channels because I am pretty much everywhere. I will answer the question there. I'll do it on my newsletter. I'll do it on this show or perhaps my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home. And episodes can be found on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Roku, C-Suite TV, and even YouTube. You can also go to Be Amazing. Dot TV. That's Be Amazing. Dot TV for episodes. I know you will love it. So let's jump into our interview today. Ricardo, welcome to the show. Hi, Chef. How are you doing? Nice to see you again. It's great to see you. I wish the rest of the world can see us, although we'll take a, a clip or two and throw it up on YouTube. You know, I love what you're doing, and I can't remember how long ago you and I met, probably about six, seven years ago, and uh, you told me you had this dream. And by the way, you're over in Germany. I know you do tons of work with some of the biggest global brands across the world, not just in the part of the world where you're living, uh, SAP, Volkswagen, uh, a number of others. Uh, Samsung, that's my Samsung, main client. Yes, yes, great brands. And you started, uh, are, are part of the team that started the ECXO, the European Customer Experience Organization. So tell us uh, briefly, before we jump into some of the questions I have, uh, for you. Just tell us what's going on in that world. Sure. So in Europe is a bit, uh, you know, Europe is a, a very complex uh, continent in certain way because we have many different countries, different cultures. So we created something to create one maturity model in 10 years from now for all Europe. That's the main objective that we have. And uh, what's happening in Europe in terms of customer experience is growing very fast. Since the acquisitions of uh, the acquisitions by SAP uh, of um, Qualtrics, and the market is super super uh, active right now because it's just growing. The majority of countries here that don't copy the US, they are trying to um, create their own models. So it will take some time to be in the maturity yep. level, but we are getting there. It's hopefully in ten years from now, something like that. So you just said something interesting. They don't copy the US. Is that what I heard you say? Uh, yeah. But that's exactly. what you said. That's what you said. So I travel around the world and I'm asked to speak at different events about customer experience. And I ask them, do you want me to try to drill down on what's happening in your country? Or do you want me to share what's happening in my part of the world with major brands who are trying to create loyalty? Every client, I don't believe one of them have ever said, no, don't talk about what's happening in the U.S. We want to talk about it. I asked them yeah. how well everybody knows what's happening in the U.S., and they say, we all watch TV. <laughs> and we all know about brands but, like Amazon and, and yeah. Apple and uh, what. Yeah, you know, we, so we all use that. Yeah, the so all the brand, yeah. great brand. Amazon is here, Apple is everywhere. But the main point is, is not that we are not, what I'm saying, not copying. Obviously, the U.S. has started CX. And we respect that culture, all, all those things, strategy, designing, etc. But I think there are different approaches for that. And different countries and regions and cultures need different things. Not always is about uh, doing what the U.S. do. We can create our own modules and it will be great as well. For example, Europe have a big focus in, in design, in clean design that the U.S. doesn't have quality and other things. So we are adding to that a bit 
and we are developing now certain things to to create really a ECXO in one year from now we are going to launch some products and, and that's the reason but obviously the US started as and we all all respect the US and I think it's very good to have a a, a benchmark of the US as which mm -hmm. is more mature with Australia and England but when I say let, let me correct that when I say not copying I'm saying like uh, England and Holland, they are great in customer experience in certain level, but they copied the US. They did not create it, absolutely nothing if you analyze the market and yep. told leaders and, and how we are doing the things. So that's the point that I, I'm meaning. We're trying right. to create something different. Yeah. So I go around the world and I mean, I look at some of the levels of service that are in other parts of the world, especially Asia. Uh, I was just over in Dubai and I look at how people respect other people. They respect the customer, at a, in my opinion, at a whole nother level than what's happening even here in the U.S. And it impresses me. However, there's no formal process around that, which means that, you know, it's being nice is one thing and respectful is one thing. But there's a process that goes behind all of that that delivers the entire customer experience. Yeah, that's a great point because Emirates... Dubai and they depend right now. Obviously, they, they have petrol, they have gas, everything that we need as in the world. But they do understand, especially the, the leadership, they understand clearly the importance of customer experience and they emphasize that in all they talk in, around Dubai and, and the Emirates that how important is customer experience because they are delivering a kind of Las Vegas in, in Dubai in a certain way, correct? That's what I think they are doing even a better version than Las Vegas in, in certain moments. And uh, and it's all about experience. So they understand that and services is something basic for, 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 for depending on tourism and those kinds of things. And in Asia, uh, basically my experience, especially in Korea, in Taiwan, in, in, in Hong Kong, etc. Look, it's really amazing, but that's natural. I, I don't think they have a culture or a strategy. It's just a natural thing of respecting the guy that's right. going to buy your, uh, your uh, bread and butter in a certain way, yes that I am serving you right now. So let's do a good job. That's, that's what yeah, I believe. I, I, I was so impressed. Um, last week I was in Dubai, as you and I talked about, and and they just have a a way of greeting guests and customers um, that in restaurants and hotels and, and some of the other, I went into some consumer facing areas and we talked a lot about the customer experience. I want to shift gears. Um, you just wrote an article and I know you've written quite a bit about this topic. This is one of my favorite topics, so much so that I actually wrote an entire book titled The Convenience Revolution around the idea of convenience and uh, simplicity and no friction. So let's go there because you just wrote another article. Let's start off with this. How much uh, is, what's the opportunity? Because if you can create a simple experience for your customers, what's the opportunity that brands and companies have if they were to effectively do this? Yeah. So first, there is no difference really here. Just to start that to explain something. My focus always be to be us, but there is no real difference. If you have right. experience like Amazon, which is uh, almost frictionless, that uh, is all algorithms very very well designed, and you go to as you, as you by yourself mentioned before, look. Everybody's emulating. They have the memory of the last experience. So then you want to you expect that. Doesn't matter if it's B2B or B2C. It doesn't matter that. Um in the in the how can I in the world of uh, simplification, okay, and convenience. To get to convenience, you need to simplify certain things. Exactly. It's easy to say, very hard to get done. Okay, that, that's the first thing. But there's a background. How where this started in Amazon? Let's just take Amazon as a, a normal company, not, not uh, relating to B2B or B2C. Started with Bezos. That was his mindset. Yes, and he broke the best people in the world to create easy, convenient. Even, uh, yeah. You know, let's dis. That was his disruptor. Was simplicity and convenience. Exactly, and uh, so so this is one part of that. The second part of that is convenience, simplicity, and a great experience starts, as we all know, 
in the board or in the or in the C suite. I think it's more C suite. But there's That's, one detail. By the way, for those that don't hear that, C suite is C suite, boardroom, uh, leadership at the highest level. This is where it begins. I'm I'm in I'm interpreting your accent, which by the way, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You wouldn't have that accent if you were over there. That's exactly the way everybody sounds about where I'm from in the or the U.S. I go, he's got an accent, and by the way, your people say I have an accent, so it, it doesn't matter. That's right. And the other factor here is that everything in the end of today depends of one word, which I call design, and you call design as well. Why it depends on design? Because we can aim to have a frictionless experience or intuitive design, but the truth is very hard to get them. And you need a mindset as you need the mindset of customer experience on that. And to, if you don't do that in your, especially in technology, enterprise technology, you are leaving money on the table because as easier you make the experience for your customer, as easy it will be for them to adopt your experience. And for me, adoption sometimes means is equal to loyalty because adoption maybe is the clown world, but uh, to going back to a supermarket, to be back in the supermarket is always the same thing because it's about loyalty and because it's easier for me to buy this here or not there. And, and so this is the principle that I have all the time when I'm creating things for companies and helping them to create the experience from the top down, et cetera. How we need to approach those things. Everything that starts with the design can be the experience, can be the product, can be the service, can be the solution or the technology, whatever it is. You have to think first that you never will satisfy everyone. Secondly, that you are designing that to create a kind of perception, what I call perception analysis, and what we work with a lot in Samsung, which is a uh, every product and what is famous in Samsung is the B2C product, but they have one billion different things, lines of products that are B2B. So our ob our objective and our work that is really about uh, perception analysis all the time, how yeah. this is perceived and how you test and how you you do you make the things right for the customers. Because you is chap hiking and you have a different mindset than Ricardo and then John and then Paul and Ringo and George and Joe. <laughs> but, <laughs> you just but, put uh, us in the same sentence as the Beatles. <laughs> exactly. So there's a <laughs> but that's that's the mindset, yes. You have to create something that will be adoptable. That's mm. all the times that I say. And every company today, unfortunately, unfortunately, runs on adoption. That's yep. fact. So I, I, what I hear you saying is first we need at the top to decide this is what we want to achieve. We want to create a simple and convenient experience for our customers, whether we're in B2B or B2C. Uh, we're going to take a look at what we believe the opportunity is, what we think the payoff is going to be. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to take a break in a moment. This is the payoff. In your most recent article that you wrote on simplicity, uh, which uh, you can go to uh, well, I'll tell you, in the show notes, we'll put a link to the article. Um, and I included it in my top five recently because I thought it was not just a Thank top you. five article, but it was number one that week. And I would say it's probably one of the most important articles of the year. Um, this is what, if you were to invest in the, uh, I believe it's the top 10 brands, and you you included a chart from a company known as uh, um Siegel, Siegel, Siegel and Gale. Siegel and Gale. And it's Siegel plus Gale, G-A-L-E. They tracked the 10 best brands, replacing them at the end of the year if they didn't continue to be as simple as they should be. And if you would have made an investment back in 2009, here in the U.S., that oh, yeah. we're just coming out of the recession, right? Okay. And so it's after the recession, you know, as we're coming out of it not at the bottom. So I, if they started in 2000 a day, I would have said, okay, it shows an even bigger, but look at it from 2009. It looks like through 2021 or 22, doesn't matter. 21, uh, this, this article is 21. You leave 400. Okay, 21. Here is the difference. If you invested in, in the S and P, you would have had about a 400 or so percent growth. That's a lot. Four times your money in the last, what, 12, 13 years, right? But if you invested in a portfolio of the 10 
easiest to do business with companies, the simplest companies, not 400%, not 800%, not 1,000%, not 1,500, but 1,841% return, 18 times. Yeah, that's really amazing. That's more than four or five times what the market did. And so I want you to hold that thought. I want everybody to think about that because we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to hear Ricardo's take on exactly why that's happening. This is Amazing Business Radio. Don't go away. Let's talk about Text Expander, a tool that allows your team to eliminate repetitive typing with just a few keystrokes. Anything you type over and over, such as customer responses, will be at your team's fingertips so they have the power to do what they do best, just faster. Quickly reply to emails and chats from a library of responses that you create, completing answers to common questions and issues. Your entire team stays on the same page with the same common responses that can be personalized on the fly. And it's simple to use. Type commonly used content into a text expander snippet and give it an abbreviation of just a few letters and symbols. Share the snippet with the team. When you type the abbreviation, it triggers the snippet and the content expands anywhere you type, including email, chat, or social media. It's that easy. Just go to www.textexpander.com to learn more about this amazing and productive tool. Sign up for a year and get 20% off. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio. We are talking to Ricardo Saltz Golko, and we are talking about all things customer experience and simplicity, convenience, and no friction. This is what customers love. I threw a big stat out there that if you had invested in the last 12, 13 years in a portfolio by Siegel and Gale's top 10 brands that they consider to be the easiest, simplest brands to do business with, your your increase is 1,841% versus about 400 or so percent in the S&P. Incredible stat. Let's go there. What is your thought on that stat and fact? Yeah, it's very good. It's very nice to see those brands there in different regions. Yes, that's uh, that's by, by amazing. By the way, share with us what some of those brands are, so everybody, because you've recognized Samsung, you'll recognize uh, Audi, uh, obviously Amazon. Amazon is everywhere. Uh, Apple, not. I think I, I did not see Apple. I saw Samsung. I saw uh, Lido. It's interesting that there's a lot of B two C, but when you talk about B two B, it's much more sexy. In certain ways, so it's much more difficult than to include those those brands that we we really work with. Yes, yeah, so that's that's really interesting. SAP business B two B, that's that's huge. They're on the list. Yeah, SAP in some divisions they they did a good job, uh, especially after the acquisition uh, craziness that they they went through during two or three years as they they acquired to gain advance in uh, advantages in cloud. So they improved a lot, I think, with the new talent that comes on board as well. I mean, I look at like, you know, here in the U.S., Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, Costco, Google, Burger King. I love it. Duncan is in the donuts. I, I, I what's Duncan? I never heard this brand before reading the Duncan Donuts. Duncan Donuts. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is they, they call now Duncan. They, they, they cut the donuts. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, and and you've got Disney and and Levi and Publix, which is a big supermarket chain here. And I know when we were looking at simplicity years ago, you and I were first talking. I believe you are a big fan of Aldi. Yeah, the the, the beauty about Aldi is exactly what you added in your article in Forbes about me is that uh, they come with the three best ketchups. That's just an example. Three best feature. Imagine for I your love technology. It. And I remember that exact yeah. ketchup the, example. Yeah. <laughs> and when they penetrated the UK, they, they have a, comp- a competition that was the test when they have 32 ketchups. So imagine the time that you take to decide your ketchup because we are human beings and you have certain limits to decide everything's all the day. You come, you get the best ketchup options. You have three features. You go to the cashier, you pay, you go home. And in the audio, you have to think, and especially guys like me that I, I, I'm i diabetic, I have to see this, what's what's inside, you know, how sugar, you know. So it's, it's very easy and very well simple. 
I'll go a step further. I mean, I realize some people love the idea of variety and choice, but when I go into the supermarket, which kind of freaks me out a little bit because there's so much to look at, it's so overwhelming. I have ADD, it kicks in. And if I have to look at, like my wife says, go get some ketchup. And I go in there and there's 15 different brands of ketchup and all different sizes. I'm going, oh my gosh, where am I going to go? But what I love with your uh, Aldi's example, it's like there's three choices. And it's the best ketchup, yeah. the Aldi's brand ketchup, and maybe there's different sizes in those ketchups. That's all you have to choose. I'm going, oh, yeah. so much easier to deal with. Yeah, it's easy to adopt. That's the principle of Aldi. It's easy to adopt and also easy to negotiate for them because they can get much better prices than other uh, big retailers around the globe. So that, that's the, the, the kind of business model. But this can be also translated to the technology world, as in for the B2B world. If you give less, easy will be to adopt your 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 software or your, your hardware, it doesn't matter what. And uh, and that's what I base my work on, as to obviously there is customization, but because we are all different, what is easy for you maybe is not going to be easy for me. So thanks God they created cloud because the cloud gives you the opportunity to see what customer is doing right now. And you can understand upfront and act preventative where he's going and what he's adopting or not. So we can help him. That's, that's the idea. So per, you just use the word personalization. And uh, it's like, how do you, it, it's scale. Personalization, people say you can't personalize at scale. I believe you can. You can't micro personalize at scale, but you can break your customers up into different categories. And some people uh, want, uh, so let me ask, some people like, love the simplicity of an Aldi, two or three choices of ketchup and all the other items. They don't overwhelm you with variety as much as they do quality and simplicity. And that is a formula that works for them. But then there are others that like to shop and they like to look at everything and pick up and touch and compare this brand to that brand. What do you have to say about that? That's a great question. Um, I will relate that to complexity. The uh, complexity that's a word we haven't used yet. Complexity. We went from simplicity to customers yeah. who probably love complexity. No, complexity is a need, okay? Uh, complexity is not uh, that I don't think people really like but is a need. And uh, if I like more options, for example, if I have time, I'm obviously going to go to a bigger supermarket, uh, just uh, uh, buying the, the example of all the bigger supermarket that may have more variety because, and when I don't have time, I go into the Audi. Okay, even though I don't I don't eat ketchup anyway, but just is just an example. Uh, the same things apply for everything that you do in life. Um, some complexities, in giving more options are necessarily, especially in technology world. Why? First, because you have the customers asking for that. So your supermarket provides 15 catch or 50 features, 15 features. The, you Somebody's asking for that, otherwise you would not be there. You are there because of the 15, not to the one or two there. So there are different tastes, we are different, and that's great. So have a thing for every one of us. The only difference about Audi and if you know about uh, the history of this brand specifically, um, they created the model in that way because the scarcity that they had during the Second World War here in Europe. So it's a very interesting history and how they created the, the, the business model of the company. But that's specifically for them. I would say that having more options is great. You know what? I love uh, lots of options when I have the time to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to, to, to deal with something else. Yes, I'm going to go to another supermarket. And in technology, the same things apply. As I mentioned, you have a limit of decisions to make every day. When you are customizing a software in the beginning, when you are receiving and you have to adopt those things, obviously, you are going to mold to yourself or you have a team working that with you. But then becomes this automatically thing to be uh, time uh, effective also for the company that you are working for. And that's where complexity and simplicity comes. Now, complexity is important and great to have in certain situations. For example, in manufacturing, when you are using IoT systems that have you alarm because of sensor and you get close, that's happened to me. Um, 
you get closer to a robot and he's going to kill you if you get a kick from him. So it's great to have hey, a software wait, telling... Wait, say again, the robot's going to, going to kill you if... What? If you get a punch of a robot, it's your end. He's right. super fast and super strong. It's, it's a, a gigant thing. So there are some complex to prevent situations like that that are very good. You know, there are processes that are saving people life that are very good. Now, if right. you go so, to a... Comp- but, but, but I believe that what's behind the scenes can be complex but on the surface needs to be simple. The true, true, yes, 100%. That's the principle of con, of con, uh, of uh, convenience, That's that simplicity, as you have to do the things, is like Amazon. Amazon is extremely complex, but in front, when you open this, it's super simple. Right, I love it. And at the end of the day, the confused buyer, meaning if, there's too, if it's too complex, the confused buyer's, probably going to move on and try to find something easier or be reluctant to buy. Uh, Ricardo, we are just about out of time. And I I could go on and on with this topic. As you know, I wrote a book. I keep referring back to it. I keep writing articles about it. And then I keep seeing your articles, which fire me up a little bit. Uh, Again, I'm going to make sure that everybody has a link to this most recent article. Uh, But if you could share with us your one final nugget of of wisdom or idea that you would love to uh, this audience to have when they finish listening to our episode, what would that be? Thank you. So I think that if you can measure your design in results, that would be good for your company. And how you do that, and I wrote a list for you because I don't remember all of them. So you know what adoption means. You have, for example, adoption rate, which is showing how the people are adopting our software. You have something that you're showing in terms of technology, time to first value. How long is it taking to this person to learn and to start to use and uh, implement whatever is the module about that you are using technology or if a so- uh, hardware? It doesn't need to be. I mean, it, it, I just I think this principle goes beyond just technology. It's, sure. Everything. You know, right. Everything. And uh, you have obviously in terms of grow, you have the user acquisition, the churn, the referrals. And in the design, you have the normal um, uh, measurements of CX, SAT, SAS, etc. Some people like NPS. You have usability rating. You have uh, time on task. How much are you enjoying to work in my software or my solution or whatever it is that I can understand that you are adopting this and how much you are not using that so then I can take some preventative measures instead of having you renewing with somebody else yes, going to another client staying with me for longer, developing loyalty, and be back again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like that last one. I'll be back, right? <laughs> I know you're you're having fun with a, another title of a book. Uh, and so what I hear you saying is it's real simple. We need to measure in some form or fashion what our customers' experience is. And I don't believe it's what you're saying. It's not just the end result. We don't just want to hear oh, you were happy with us or you would recommend us if we want to use NPS. We want to know along the way, can we measure and get feedback on different points of interaction to ensure we're creating the, for lack of a better term, the simplest way to use our solution, whether it be software, whether it be a consumer experience like Amazon. Let me tell you what, Amazon puts that one-click purchase in there. Talk about simplicity. I mean, there is a comp just to 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 explain on that. There is a company, a Reba SAP, that yep. they have bubbles. Then you, when you touch in, a, in the beginnings only, when you touch a, a, a feature, they will show you what the feature is about and where you should go from here. So it's very almost close to intuitive. They did, I think, is the more closest thing that I ever saw in intuitiveness. Yes, and it's so well designed. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's what I think is very much what you are saying. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Well, Ricardo, as I mentioned, you and I could talk for hours on this. Thank you so much for being on the show. We'll have you back and we'll do a part two or three or whatever it is to continue to explore your thoughts on convenience and simplicity. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much uh, for having me here. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another episode of Amazing Business Radio. We will be back next week with another great interview. So until that time, this is Chef Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.